For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Eboku. Father, speak to us, minister to us, bless us, O God, with your counsel. Do not leave us comfortless, O God. Lord, we want to please you. We want to bless you, O God. I hide behind the cross of Calvary and I ask you, O God, manifest your glory. We want to see your glory, your word, the power in your word. We feel with the fullness that comes through your word and by your word. In the name of Jesus, for your word is you, O oh Lord. Your word is you. Your word is you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, this morning I woke up and uh, I probably woke up at about when I looked at the clock, it was about 10 past 4. And I received a word from God. I received a message and I wanted to share. Somehow it's been pondering in my heart for the last few days, but um, it just became electric clear to me, very crystal clear, you know, sharp. And everyone who loves the Lord and who is interested, who understands that, you know, we are so pilgrims and sojourners in this life, you have to take very seriously the words I'm about to share with you today. I pray that I find grace to be able to share this very simple word um, that the Lord would have us share. You see, a lot of us have fully not understood what life is about and God's expectations. There are certain things we say over and again. There are certain words, even for us here, with all that we're hearing. I see it. Fortunately, I'm we're not so, so many. So I think personally as your pastor, I have the opportunity to interact with quite a, a lot of you, if not most of you. And um, for me, we are on a different uh, field. We're on a different playing field. If you are in this church, it means that you are here so that you can find God and please God. Listen, let's put our priorities right. Do you know today, remove the music and the entertainment value that's going around the whole church today. People run away from church to show that they don't realize whether the Holy Spirit is there or not. People we don't seem to want to really connect with God. Now, it's about all these things, about my church is beautiful, the musician, we have all these equipment, and if you hear it, there's violin, and there's saxophone. And, and, and Listen, if you go to Whitney Houston concert or whoever are those popular people, you will get goose pimples. Go for one, and you see what I'm talking about. Emotional hype. Is like spiritual hype. What are we looking for here? 
in your pursuit of God, you have to define certain things clearly. It's so easy to fall by the wayside. It's so easy to stray away that we miss the mark. It's so easy to become a Pharisee. It's so easy to become a hypocrite. It's so easy to become a legalist or a religious person who's just going, doing things. After a while, you go through the motions. You, you must not be that kind of person. You have to always put yourself in check. It's so easy to be so consumed in yourself that before you realize, everything around you is you, 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 you. You are no more saving God. And so, for this reason, I want to share this message with you. In John and chapter 20, if you help me to be very fast in bringing out these scriptures, I'll be faster and uh, I think we'll get it a long way together. In John and chapter 20 and verse 21, Jesus makes a very, very crucial statement. There he says, Then Jesus said to them again, means he had said it before, this is crucial. This is so crucial. I need you as a child of God. If you say you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you have to know John. what is John 20, 21 saying. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Or King James will say, so send I you. As my father has sent me, in the same way God has sent me. And the words I want to share with you is so lacking in our generation. In fact, even at that time, I woke up this morning even with a rebuke for myself. You know, over the last 21 days, we've been fasting. And our core theme has been binding the devil, binding the strong man. I know that some of us will have to do another 21 days. And it's, it's, you see, I began to discover something. Unless you really start engaging the powers of darkness, you will not know anything called trouble. Satan can leave you there in peace and you think you're okay. You are not. More than ever before, I found myself interceding. And I know my wife... Also, joining me, oftentimes, we're praying and we're interceding. And we find ourselves binding a strong man. We're coming against the powers that are controlling the students. I found that we've been interceding a lot for the um, transgenerational transference of this message. That the God of this world will not blind their eyes. We've noticed that the more we engage... More than ever before, we've been interceding for the challenges that people are facing. We've been engaged in, in so many things. And I'm sure some of you are also doing the same thing. And what do you find out? You're going to find out that all hell is going to break loose. What they're going to do is to distract you. If they don't distract you, they will try and discourage you. If they don't discourage you, at some point in time, when all the attacks started to come, I thought I was going to have a heart attack <laughs> this period. But of course, the devil is a liar. Because it's left, right, center, and forward. But we have to be discerning. And we have to know that it is time for us to step up, not step back. He's throwing everything at those of us who are praying. If you are praying, it's happening to you. If you are not praying, don't worry, you're comfortable. And you can stay in your comfort zone. But that's not what God wants for you. There is something so much bigger and greater and better that God has for us. And until we really bind the strong man, he is fighting tooth and nail because I don't want to release those things. Many of us have, are losing many things. The Bible says, see to it that no man takes your crown. Many of us are losing, when he's speaking of crown, he's speaking of your eternal reward. He's speaking of also your earthly blessings. Satan steals crowns. The things that God has designed for you. And if you do not, if you do not launch out and engage him and resist him, he's very fierce. And he's comfortable with the way some believers are. They are not engaging him at all. 
you know, left and right and forward and center. Uh, and, and sometimes I will be, we pray, and I'll say, this devil is going to suffer, he's going to suffer. Before you realize, one thing has happened. Another thing has happened. In fact, anytime I receive a call now, before I answer it, I'll be listening. What is it now? If somebody is not dead, somebody is dying. If somebody is not dying, something is knocking. If something is not knocking, something is burning. If it's just one thing or the other. And before you realize, you find yourself sometimes a bit discouraged. Yielding to the devil, even complaining, murmuring, yielding to the devil, offending God. And so the Lord had to speak clearly to me. And, and it's, it's, it's a message I want to bring to you. It may not go the way you think it's going to go, but Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, I've just shared John 20. Okay, so before I go to John Ephesians, let me do John 20. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I. So this is the mission, the commission, the real, the real mission of Christianity. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, this is what you must understand. That as God sent Jesus, is the same way he's sending us. How did God send Jesus? I want you to read John chapter 5 and verse 30. John 5 and 30. There he says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Do you see this? So, I haven't come because I am doing my will. I have come to seek the will of the Father. God has brought us into this life, one, to seek the will of the Father. Our mission on this earth is a discovery of the will of the Father and a doing of the will of the Father. John chapter 6 verse 38. Our mission on this earth is discovery of what the Father's will is and doing what the Father's will is. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So Jesus was sent to do the will of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5 I came down from heaven that's what I came for understand it he didn't come down just to die on the cross don't get me wrong he came to die on the cross but dying on the cross is within the context of doing the will of the father so his, 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 his life was not just because he came to die on the cross he came to do many things but everything is encapsulated within this. I came to do the will of my father. So that at the time he was going to die in the garden of Gethsemane, he's crying to God, not my will, but thine be done. There is something he has caught that our generation of Christianity must catch. Why am I saying so? Because even in the cause of praying, I had a, 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 a prayer meeting on Saturday morning, and I was trying to tell the guys somewhere in Ikoi, I was telling the guys that, you know, all the brethren, because there were some ladies. I was saying to them, I don't know whether I have, whether I should say this all the time, because I do say it sometimes. I'm so afraid for our generation. I feel, and I can't explain it, I feel that possibly 90% of professing Christians are not going to make it to heaven. More than ever, for even myself, I've been very thoughtful, very, very, very burdened. Have I latched on? When God continues to open your eyes and you see more and more and clearer and clearer, you will feel like Isaiah. You say, woe unto me, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. Because you will ask yourself, am I aligned? I look at our children. 
More than ever before, I am so burdened. I'm burdened for my children. And when I speak of my children, I'm talking of my children's generation. Because Satan has the better of them. They are more interested, whether we like to admit it or not. If you look at that generation, they have no fire for God. It's very few and far between. There are the good ones who do this. And many of our children are good. But if you notice that there was a time that God was moving. And you just had to enter the secondary school. By the time you entered the secondary school, you were on fire for God. There was a scripture union. There was all of this and all of that. Now, they want to be like the world. Now, you see, as a father, I will never push my child to Christ. Never force them. My work is going to be on my knees and by example. I will share the word of God, but I will not make them go to church. It doesn't mean I may not see that there may be a lack of fire. But it becomes my duty to start crying. And this is part of the burden. Why I know that we have to start going back to the universities with the message God has given us and even to the secondary school. This is a war on its own. Do you know? The doors have now almost been shut to enter the campuses. The doors, I understand now what the scripture says. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not so that the light of the gospel will not shine. And the message that he has given to us, which is the gospel of Christ, is going to face serious battle. When Paul says in, 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 in Acts 16, he says, look, a, an effectual, a great and effectual door has been opened unto me. He knows what he's talking about. Because at that time, do you know what it is to enter Rome? Do you know what's called Rome? You know what is called Rome? And their emperors and all of that? They want to bring this carpenter's gospel to Rome? We have to pray. There is so much that is lacking amongst us. We have to pray. It is, as we begin to engage, you will now see warfare. You will now see Satan come against you. We have to pray. If not, we'll be responsible for sending our children to hell. Listen. If our generation, 90% of them are not going to make heaven, I wonder what, how many percent of our children. Sometimes, I'm very serious. And I say this with all sense of responsibility because I know my children are here. But I look at them sometimes and I ask God, have I prepared them for you? I, 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 I look at them with fear because I know what is in their generation. I know what is awaiting them. It's going to increase the wickedness it's the bible the wickedness is going to increase you are going to see things and guess what they are not even prepared i want to ask all of you here if today boko haram comes to lagos and to the south of nigeria and they start beheading people happen again it's part of the burdens why? I'm going to tell you why. God must always prove us. The Bible says that our faith in Peter, it must be sent through fire. If you are a professor of faith or you are professing faith, your faith is nothing until it goes through fire. Now, the faith, I'm not talking of just the faith that we're teaching about our faith to get a car. That, ah, my faith is through fire. I didn't get a car. I'm driving Okada. No, 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 no. Not this type of faith I'm talking about. This is the baby faith. Now the real faith of Christ is going to be tested. Who is following Christ and who is not? It's at that time you will understand what some of us have been shouting. When you see that God's people are not discipled. We can't disciple a generation by telling them God's going to bless you. God's going to give you money. God's going to give you food. It's because we're in comfort zone now. When the persecution begins, you will know that many are not Christians. When they stand face to face with you and say, are you a believer? It's already happening. Very soon, we heard that in a state now, they are saying there's going to be religious law and code. You know what's going to happen? You will find out that many people will indeed go and take license. And those who do not give license, they will just resign from their means. I don't want to die. It can happen to the true disciples of God. Because they will be ready to put their heads down. Because the gospel must be preached. But the people who are undiscipled, they are not ready. They are not prepared. They don't have the fire. They don't know the will of God. So, guess what? Everything will be killed. That's how Turkey was taken. It, generations began to come that didn't know the will of God. Didn't even care about the will of God. 
And so they surrendered the gospel. They surrendered everything because they were not Christians. But the true saints of God, they actually flourish under persecution. During persecution, when the Neros of this world are killing them, they are singing. Like I said to some people yesterday, you know, nowadays our praise and worship, when we are doing praise, it is a praise for breakthrough. This is what we do to God. We come to God, we tell everybody, you see, Jehoshaphat, he prays and God gave him blessing. Let us praise. Let's go. You are worthy. God, where is the blessing that is not coming? Who are you fooling? You are not praising God because he's God. You are praising him for what he can do for you. We are losing the whole focus. There's no discipleship going on. The real disciples were praising God in the fire. They are dying. They are praising God. They understood faith more than what we did. The, Jesus even told them in Revelation 3. He said to them, you see, some of you are about to die. In 10 days time, some of you will be killed. But stay faithful to the end. They were in the neck of, of, of death. But they were faithful. They, they would tell death to his face. You need to give your cry to Christ, Mr. Boko Haram. You need to walk with God. If not, the way you're going, you will surely go to hell. But God is able to give you mercy. I'm burdened. Ephesians. So you see, he says, wherefore he comes into the world and he says, sacrifice. I don't want, but a body you've prepared for me. Go straight to verse 7. Verse 7. He says, lo, I come. And in the volume of the book, I come to do your will, O God. So, he came to do the will of God. And anyone who says that he's a follower of God, we need to get it right. I know you've heard this before, but you're going to hear it, I believe, differently because there's something that God wants to say. We must understand this. Being born again, being a Christian means everything called the will of man is gone. It means your whole life is now living for the will of God. Listen, as Pastor Rotem is sitting there, he is living everything about him. Is living for the will of God. Let me read Ephesians. Ephesians 1, I've been itching to read that. And verse 11. Ephesians 1, I want to show you something before the foundations of the time. In whom we have obtained an inheritance. What have we obtained? Speak with some voice. In whom we have obtained what? So we have obtained an inheritance. And, 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 and what has happened? It says that being predestined before time. That is what it means. That means we have been predestined before you were born. Destiny was designed. And this is the destiny of what he wants. Be predestined according to the purpose. Of him. Who is that person? God. So we are predestined to take a, an inheritance. And that predestiny or predestination is according to the purpose of him. What does he do? Read it with me. Who walketh all things after the counsel of his will. Everything God does. He has a special advisor called his will. Let me say it again. He walketh what? Some things. Okay, maybe many things. Everything God is walking is after the counsel of his will. In other words, if God's will is not involved in it, God is not walking. Can I, is that clear? Can I say it another way? The Bible says that everything is working. That all, not, see, not some. All, he worketh all things. Everything that God is doing, what is guiding him is his will. In other words, anything that is apart from his will, God is not involved with it. All things, Bible says, he walked all things after the counsel of his will. Let me tell you, before I go further to, into the deeper part of the message, 
But let me tell you some of the deepest parts of this message, the implications. the father is not in him. Go on, go on, go on. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the father, it's of the world. Now listen to 17. And the world passes away. That is, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Anyone that does not do the will of God but does the world, it's not going to abide forever. This is the, how crucial doing the will of God is. I want to show you how important it is. The in, eternal implication. Matthew and chapter 7 verse 21. Matthew 20, 7 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. So understand that some people have really abused this. And said, oh no, no, no. This is for Israel, Israel. He was not Lord at the time. Is Lord after resurrection. Not everyone that says Lord. That means many are going to be saying Lord. Not everyone that says Lord. See, saying Lord, saying Jesus, I'm born again. I've accepted him as my Lord and personal Savior. Doesn't mean anything. Listen to what matters. I want you to hear very clearly. That's what Jesus is saying. That if you like, go ahead and say, He's my Lord and personal Savior. And I've accepted Him and I'm born again. Good for you. That's a good step in the right direction. But He's saying that not everyone that says Lord, Lord. So He didn't want to say not everyone that says Lord. He says not everyone that says Lord, Lord. That means you are really shouting it. Not everyone that says Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But. He that doeth the will of my father. So already the die is cast. Do you know that you can know whether you are going to heaven or not now? You can't. By the time I finish, you will. You'll see. Thank you for watching this Awakened Generation. We trust you've been inspired by this message. Tune in again to this channel at the same time to hear the heartbeats of God. Please send your testimonies, suggestions or inquiries to testify at tbrchurch.org or info at tbrchurch.org. We would love to host you this Sunday by 10 a.m. Visit our website or contact us on the following numbers. Jesus is coming soon, so stay rapturable.